What are the assumptions underpinning that bullish view then on Asian equities for 2021? Well, thanks, Tom. The assumptions really are a significant global cyclical recovery next year. We're looking for 6% global GDP growth at somewhat above consensus, which is about 52 and that carries over to a strong move in here in the region. That, we think, in turn will power a 23% recovery in earnings per share and a further 16% in 2022. And we think markets will be able to ride that under underlying earnings, hold on to their elevated valuations, given the fact that interest rates are really low. And then we have the tailwind of an appreciating Asian currency block against the dollar and also 2% dividend yield. So if you add all that together, you get uh, high teens total returns, which, if that turns out, would be quite a good year. It, it certainly would. Now, in terms of vaccine developments, are they potentially less of a catalyst for this part of the world than they would be in Europe and the U.S.? For the most part, that's true, although it will depend significantly interregionally. So... Clearly, China, which has had the, vac the uh, virus under control for some time, uh, although the work that we've done shows that that would not have as significant an impact just because it's already dealt with that. For other places, notably India, we think there would be a significant impact. Uh, in fact, on the work that we've done, it shows that India is the most sensitive market in the region to better vaccine news. And in fact, that's one of the reasons why we upgraded it a few weeks back. Right. Tim, tell us a little bit more about that. David here, by the way. Good morning. So, Nifty, your Good target morning, is, David. let me just look at your report here, 14,100. I think we're about 12.8 right now. So that takes us about, what is that, about 9%, 9 roughly speaking, into next year. Uh, how did you come up with a number? And is there a specific multiple you're attaching to the price on the Nifty? Because it looks kind of expensive right now. Absolutely. And that was one of the issues that we deliberated. I mean, there's no doubt that the market's expensive and it's already rallied quite significantly while earnings have been being revised down. So that means that the PE multiple has expanded. India is trading about 22 times forward earnings. That's about a 39 percent premium to the rest of the region. The long term average is about 26. So there's no doubt that India is looking a little bit expensive. Uh, that being said, uh, we think that India should be able to hold on to at least part of its premium valuation. Uh, so we are baking in about a 19 percent, sorry, 19 times forward multiple for next year. We get there through a variety of top-down and quantitative uh, measures that we've used. Uh, and I think importantly, what we're really looking at is a very significant recovery in earnings next year and the following after a very sharp drop this year, given the very significant hit that the economy took. So the combination of a very sharp cyclical recovery in earnings, uh, plus the fact that we've got uh, a persistent low interest rate environment, and we expect some further moderation of, of, of rates in India, we think that will allow the market to ride the underlying earnings with a bit of a headwind evaluation compression. But overall, that's going to add up to handsome returns in the mid-teens, especially if you calculate or take into consideration some appreciation of the rupee against the dollar. Tim, I'm sure you've also gotten this question from, from, from clients here. This recent outperformance of value over, over growth, do you think that's something that can and will continue? What's something that might support or undermine that trend, if you do think it can continue? So the answer to that is yes. Uh, we've been looking for a rotation, although we've been more apt to characterize that as preferring cyclicals over defensives. Uh, the reason for that is that there oftentimes is significant overlap between cyclicals and value, but not 100 percent. And in the work that we've done episodically, looking at how the market performs when we have macro conditions such as we have or are expecting for next year, specifically a recovery in the, in the global economy and some firming of rates uh, or at least a, a slight steepening of the yield curve as the long end of the uh, end of the curve starts to look out and anticipate some inflation pressure. When we have those sorts of circumstances, in 13 out of 13 episodes, cyclicals outperform defensives. Uh, the growth versus value shift was was there, but not quite as markedly so as cyclicals versus defensives. So we've progressively stepped into cyclicals. We've raised tech hardware back in June. We've raised. Goal or value space. We'd prefer more the industrial ones than the financial ones. 
Uh, the reason being, of course, that industrials will be more immediately responsive to improving global growth, whereas the financials might be impeded by the fact that rates remain lower for longer, and low rates and a flat yield curve typically is not as good for banks as it is for other parts of the market.